bid you welcome to St. Christopher's Episcopal Church in Lubbock, Texas. We thank you for joining us this morning, and we hope this service raises you just a little bit further than you would normally raise on this day. So please pay very close attention to the gospel lesson this morning. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. His kingdom now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I the Lord will be their God. And my servant David shall be the prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Please join me as we read Psalm 100. We'll read responsively by the half verse. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence for the song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his and his mercy is, is everlasting. And his faithfulness from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. One from another, as a shepherd, separates the sheep from the goats. 
and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Before I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of those who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison that we did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the very one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of life. Amen. Crying the king. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Those words came to her just as she was waking up in those last moments of sleep. She had heard them before, but there were other words too, words that weren't just memory. They couldn't have come from inside of her head, and they were so strange, absurd, but so clear. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, you are to place the crown upon his head. Me, she asked, waking suddenly, sitting straight up in bed, and shouting out again, me! And slowly it faded. Of course, it was only a dream, a very vivid one at that, but it was still a dream. And a good thing too, she thought, how could anyone crown the king of the universe? She remembered seeing part of an old film of the coordination of Queen Elizabeth with all the pomp and ritual and the solemn language, everyone knowing exactly what to do 
and the tremendous music. And all the people rejoiced and said, God save the queen. Long live the queen. May the queen live forever. And that would be mere play compared to the responsibility of crowning the king of the universe, the king of everything. Administering the oath of office to the President of the United States would be a thousand times easier than that. Her voice would crack. Her knees would give way. She would faint at the very sight of the King of Kings. No, it had been just a dream. Expect uh, that a crown, pardon me, except that a crown was laying next to her on her night table. It wasn't a fancy crown, just a simple band of gold without much decoration. There was one modest diamond, and that was about all that was on the crown. But she knew somehow that it was real gold and a real diamond. And she'd never seen it before. No point in arguing about the matter. So she went through her morning routine all the time asking God how she was supposed to do this chore for him. Lord, where am I supposed to look, she said, and how will I know him? She called into the office that morning to say that she was going to be out for the day. Then she found an oversized tote that the crown would fit in, and she was off for the coronation. But where and how? Heavenly voices were all very well, but it would be nice if they were more a bit specific about what she was supposed to do. A printed schedule of the coronation service would be great, preferably with a map. That would really have helped to show her where to go. But apparently God didn't work that way. She got in her car and drove around for a few minutes, keeping her eyes open, open for where she thought the coronation might be held. A church, she thought. That's a logical place. She found a parking place and walked into a Roman Catholic church on the corner. Candles burning by the statues. It looked like a good place for a coronation. But there was no one there. And the statue of Jesus already had a crown. She tried the Protestant church across the street. The secretary told her that the pastor had a lot of appointments that morning and would not be able to see her. She wasn't sure he could have given her any good information about what she would need to be doing. No advice of any kind that would help her. So much for the churches. As she walked out to her car, her eyes scanned the scenery around the churches. How would she recognize the Son of Man went through her thoughts? She was thinking so hard about that, she almost tripped over an unshaven man in a dirty old coat who was sitting on the curb in front of the church. There was an empty wine bottle sticking out of the paper sack next to him. Hey lady, he said, give me a couple of bucks, huh? I ain't had nothing to eat for a long time. She looked up and down the street. A woman has to be careful, she thought to herself, you know. But there were a lot of people around, so she couldn't use safety as an excuse for walking on. How about it, lady? I'm hungry. She looked down at him. I'm not going to give you money just so you can go get drunk. He laughed a dry, coffee laugh. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't pleasant. There was a sign for a fast food place in the next block. 
All right, she said. All right, get up and I'll take you to get you something to eat. Ah, uh, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, lady. Just give me the money. That's okay. No, come on, come on, come on. Just, just give up the money. I'll buy you a meal, but you will have to come with me. She looked straight ahead as they walked down the street, trying not to notice the stares of other pedestrians. Fortunately, the restaurant wasn't too crowded. At her urging, he stepped up to the counter and ordered a huge tray of breakfast items. She asked just for a cup of coffee and a muffin. And then she realized with all her thinking about the coronation, she had forgotten to bring any money with her. The man waited patiently. The girl behind the counter sat there and drummed her fingers on the countertop as she was waiting to receive payment for the food. She was so embarrassed. Then she thought, look, she said, I've got this crown. And she pulled it out and they stared at it. Some laughed at the crown. She winced the diamond out of the setting. Let me pay you for this food with this, she said. The cashier looked at her as if she were totally crazy. Look, it's worth a lot more than the cost of the meal, she realized. It's real, it's a real diamond. Ask your manager and see what he might say. Surprisingly, the manager accepted the diamond as payment. So they sat there at the table. She sipped her coffee and ate her muffin and he woofed down the food that he had received and had probably not eaten for several days. After he mumbled his thanks and slandered down the street, she went back to her car. She drove around for a while, still with no idea where to find the Son of Man. Then she saw what looked like a big quarrel in front of an apartment building were a few pieces of furniture set on the sidewalk. For some reason, she stopped her car and went over there, still holding the big tote with the crown in it. An old woman was being evicted from her apartment. Her son was there arguing with the owner, but the son looked as if he was as down and out as his mother. The old woman just looked confused and said nothing. I don't have room for her, the son shouted. I have five kids of my own. You can't just throw her out on the street. Look, Mac, said the owner in a tired voice. You've known this for some weeks and you still haven't done anything about it. It's all legal, he said. I've got a living to make and this ain't the United Way. Pay me, and she can stay here. She stepped forward hesitantly, reaching into the tote. Please, I think this will pay her rent for quite a while. She held out the crown, and everyone turned to look at her. Who are you? the manager said. What business is that of yours? He asked her. That doesn't matter, does it? she said. There's a jeweler not far from here. We can go there and get it appraised. So they did. The owner went with her, the old lady, and her son guarded her possessions on the sidewalk. The jeweler went into the back room to make a hushed phone call, probably to ask the police if a crown had been stolen recently. But it was all okay. 24 carat gold and enough to pay the rent for that lady for many months to come. So again, there were some thanks, some embarrassment, and she was back in her car, driving around. Well, the day was pretty well spent, and she no longer had the crown anyway. So what was the point of looking for the future king, the king of kings? 
She might as well go back home, she thought. God should have known how likely she was to bumble this whole job. She sat in her living room, emotionally drained. I'm sorry, Lord, she breathed, but this was a resentful sigh and comment. She had to go out and make a fool of herself, she thought, carrying a crown around in a tote. And she hadn't even been able to find the one who she was supposed to give it to. Where were you, Lord? She demanded. She hadn't expected an answer, but she got one. Rather, she got another question. Who did you give my crown to? Came the voice. Yes, and who had she given it to? A wino and an old lady. And the king will answer them. Truly I tell you, as you did it to one of the least of these, whom are members of my family, you did it to me. And all the people rejoiced and said, May the king live forever. Verse 34 of our gospel message this morning said, Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. Our question to each one of us in this morning's gospel, my brothers and sisters, is that do we want to be on God's left side or do we want to be on his right side? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I ask that you please stand and join me in our profession of faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. prayers of the people this morning are form four. Let us pray for the church and for the world. 
Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. This morning we remember Bobby, Steve, Debbie, Dot, Pat, Jonathan, Kelly, Ben, the Morgans, Richard and Pam, Les, Jim, David, Yolanda, Terry, Richard and Jennifer. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, remembering Kathy, Mary, Connie, and Courtney, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Lord. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us and your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we hunger with them. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
like to welcome you again to St. Christopher's on this kind of cool morning. We're hoping for a little bit of moisture, and if God desires us to have it, we will have it. Uh, I'd like to bring to your attention, and this was also should also be in the, the newsletter, and it's uh, celebrating abundance, and it's devotions for Advent. We've been asked to join Father Les at St. Matthew's in Newton and Trinity in El Dorado, Kansas for an Advent study, and it will be on the Mondays of Advent. It will be on November the 30th, December the 7th, the 14th, and the 21st. And you will have all this information coming to you this week. It will be at 7 p.m. And it will be on St. Matthew's uh, Zoom account. So uh, I will get this to you this afternoon or first thing in the morning. There is a book that goes along with it. Uh, it's Celebrating Abundance. So if you'd like to go online and look up that title, uh, Annette and I found a couple last night, so if you'd like to join us, please let me know, either by text or by email, and if you don't have either one of those, please call the church office and let us know so I can let Father Les know how many people are going to join his two congregations for this great study. I have the pleasure this morning of blessing all the prayer shawls. And if you can't see all the covers, you're missing out because this is really beautiful. And I just want to thank all the wonderful ladies who have spent time making these shawls. And please know that this shawl, I guess you would call ministry, uh, at other churches that I've been in Involved with has been a tremendous success and especially for those who need to be lifted up. And if I may, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you revealed your Son clothed in majesty and glory. Accept these prayer shells which we offer for the use of those who suffer in mind and body. Grant that those who use them may be wrapped in the warmth of your loving care and your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd like to remind you that uh, on Wednesday at 10 a.m. we will have a Thanksgiving service, so we ask it uh, if you would... Thursday. Thursday. I'm a day ahead. I mean, I want to run for life, huh? But on Thursday, please join us for uh, a Thanksgiving service at 10 a.m. It will be virtual, and uh, if you have a special prayer request, please call the office, text me at this crazy number, 316-772-6273, or send it to my email, Bernard, ma2005, at gmail.com. So let me know if you have a special request or a special someone you would like to be prayed for on Thanksgiving Day. Anything I forgot? And by the way, Thanksgiving Day, we're going to have some special music, so I really encourage you to uh, attend virtually, if you will. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, good, and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was sent over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body, and the blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All of this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, that by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed him with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and the singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to his world. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may you have his blessing, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
and may it remain with you from this time forth forevermore. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.